So the cell membrane is also referred to as the fluid mosaic model. What's a mosaic? Yeah, it's like a picture with all kinds of bits and pieces in it. Uh, makes it look uh, very different with all the different parts to it. Uh, that is what our cell membrane is all about. It is made up of multiple different elements. And so it's referred to as a mosaic. The word fluid means that it is bendable, flexible, very pliable in comparison to being rigid or stiff. You don't want your cell membranes to be rigid or stiff. You want them to be able to move and bend. And our cell membrane is able to do that. If our cell membrane was rigid and stiff, whenever you moved, uh, they would crack. So for instance, you know, you move your finger over and over and over again, and eventually uh, your cell membranes will all crack and your finger falls off. Or imagine your heart, which is beating approximately 80 beats per minute all day long. Those cells are contracting and flexing and bending, but if they are too rigid, uh, then those cells start to crack and break. And there are some disease states that make people's cells too rigid, and these individuals usually don't live very long. They're born with this genetic malfunction, which we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. So the part of the cell membrane that is in most abundance would be the phospholipids. So remember we talked yesterday about the fact that the phospholipids are a double layer and you have all of the polar heads pointing out towards the fluid part, extracellular fluid or the intracellular fluid with the nonpolar carbon tails in between. And so you have this phospholipid bilayer. And again, the majority of what our cell membrane is made up of is this phospholipid bilayer. Now, we're talking about a cell, and every single cell has its own function. It's like its own little factory. It produces certain products that the body's going to use. So certain things have to be able to leave the cell, but then you also have to get certain things entering into the cell so that the cell knows what's going on in the outside world, so it has enough uh, building materials to be able to produce its products. So this phospholipid bilayer, again, remember, it is made up of a fatty substance. That's what phospholipids are. And fats can dissolve in fats. So any type of fatty substance, like let's say maybe a steroid hormone, if it wants to get into the cell, will just dissolve right through the phospholipid bilayer and move into or even out of the cell membrane. And 
these proteins are referred to as integral proteins. And so you can see them, they're kind of protruding uh, on top and also on bottom of our phospholipid bilayer. Now, these integral proteins, what they actually are is they are a type of gate. So that certain substances are able to move through this gate into or out of our cell membrane. Now, the way I've drawn it is not exactly correct uh, because this gate is actually made up of globs of protein that kind of look like long hot dogs, you might say, or like maybe this pen. And what happens is you have five of these globs of protein that all come together to make this gate. And when these five globs come together, they fit very tightly together so that nothing can go through this gate. It's closed. Okay? But we need certain things to be able to get through our protein gate. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to stimulate this gate somehow. And so we're going to have something come along. Let's say that this is like a uh, glucose gate. We need to have insulin to come along and bind to our gate. When that insulin binds to the gate, it triggers the breaking of hydrogen bonds in our five globs of protein. Now what happens to proteins when hydrogen bonds break? They change, they change shape. Exactly. So what we see with these five globs of protein is they actually start to open up sort of like flower petals. They begin to bend outward. You get them bending, and as they bend, you get a channel or a pore in between these globs of protein so that particular chemicals can get through. The insulin after a while will just fall off. It'll break off. And when it does, all those proteins, all those hydrogen bonds will reform, and those proteins will come back up to their original shape, and it will close the gate again. So in order to open this gate, you have to have something bonding to the proteins to stimulate the first hydrogen bonds breaking and causing those proteins to bend backwards so that you get that channel in the middle. And then when it breaks off, the hydrogen bonds reform, your protein goes back to its original shape. Now, only certain chemicals can fit through this channel or through this pore. So these integral proteins are referred to as a gate or sometimes you'll hear people call them a channel, sometimes people will call them a pore. just depends on who you're talking to. To get through here, we have ions that can get through the gates, or we have polar molecules, or like sugar, we have medium molecular weight molecules. And included in the polar would be water. If we do need water to get across the membrane, it can go through some special water channels that allow it to cross. <laughs>